குட் ஈவினிங் ஆஸ்பிரண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு தி ஹிந்து நியூஸ் அனாலிசிஸ் பை சங்கர் ஐஏஎஸ் அகாடமி ஃபார் த டேட் டுவெல்த் ஆஃப் செப்டம்பர் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி டூ டிஸ்பிளேடு ஹியர் ஆர் தி ஆர்டிகல்ஸ் டேக்கன் அப் ஃபார் டுடேஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் with this let's start our discussion next we are going to take this text and context article for our discussion it says that rajasthan has started an urban employment guarantee scheme with the objective of providing economic support to the poor and needy families so in this discussion we are going to see the major differences between the scheme introduced in rajasthan and the famous mg narega and also we will see the other similar schemes in other states first of all let us see the important facts relating to the scheme in rajasthan the newly introduced scheme is named as indira gandhi urban employment guarantee scheme as we already know the objective is to provide economic support to the poor and needy families living in the cities this objective is fulfilled through work for 100 days and this work is provided on demand in a year Now coming to MG Narega it is expanded as Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme the scheme's objective is to provide a legal guarantee for 100 days of employment in every financial year to adult members of any rural household can you see the difference here Indira Gandhi Urban Employment Guarantee Scheme concentrates on the urban area but MG Narega concentrates on the rural area see when there is a economic shock it is essential to provide people with formal access to a livelihood safety net mg narega is like a safety net but the drawback with the scheme is that it exists only in the rural areas so to provide a safety net to urban india this indira gandhi urban employment scheme has been introduced there is also a similarity here see both schemes guarantee 100 days of work which helps to provide livelihood safety net next coming on to the eligibility criteria see as far as the rajasthan scheme is concerned persons in the age group of 18 to 60 years residing within the limits of urban local bodies are eligible to demand and get employment also know that preference will be given to the poor and destitute people who lost their livelihood during the pandemic now for the mg narega The scheme provides guaranteed employment to every rural household whose adult members volunteer to do unskilled manual work. Here the difference is the concentration of rural and urban households. Indira Gandhi Urban Employment Scheme covers people living within urban local bodies, but MG Narega covers people from rural households. Now moving on, see the next major difference is the nature of work. Indira Gandhi Urban Employment Scheme concentrates on all kind of activities in states. MG Narega works are majorly related to agriculture and allied activities. Apart from this, the work facilitate rural sanitation projects also. So, it caters to the rural environment. It is obvious, right? Agriculture activities are very rare in urban areas. So, the work is also decided accordingly. Now, these are the major differences between the schemes. Indira Gandhi Urban Employment Scheme and MG Narega C like the Indira Gandhi Urban Employment Scheme many other states are also introducing employment guarantee schemes in urban areas in fact the article says that Rajasthan has come up with this scheme after studying many other similar schemes in other states we will just see what they are Mukhya Mantri Sahri Ajivika Guarantee Yojana was launched by Himachal Pradesh It was started with the objective of enhancing livelihood security in urban areas by providing 120 days of guaranteed wage employment to every urban household. Other schemes include Ayyankali Urban Employment Guarantee Scheme in Kerala, Urban Wage Employment Initiative under Udnati in Odisha, and Mukhya Mantri Shramik Yojana in Jargand. See, you should know that these schemes are urban versions of MG Narega. Here you should ask yourself a question why urban versions of employment guarantee schemes are coming up all around the country as we already saw it was being brought 
to guarantee a livelihood safety net for urban people also now you may ask indian government is operating the national urban livelihoods mission nulm right then what is the need c nulm is focused on self employment through skill up gradation and credit linkages through banks but it does not provide guaranteed wage employment provisions like mg narega that is exactly why urban versions of mg narega is coming up and this indira gandhi urban employment scheme of rajasthan is one among them that's all about the discussion in this discussion we saw the major differences between indira gandhi urban employment scheme and mg narega after that we saw the employment guarantee schemes in other states and finally we ended our discussion by seeing the need for the urban livelihood safety net with these points let us move on to the next discussion let's take this news article for our discussion this article speaks about border roads organization this is a news because the people in a small village of arunachal pradesh have protested against bro the protest have been registered against the construction of a road project which has destroyed the local sacred forest let's get not deeper into this issue instead we will take this opportunity to learn about the border roads organization its mandate and some of the successful projects of it in prelims perspective first we will see about bro see the border roads organization is a road construction organization that provides infrastructure support to the indian armed forces it was formed in the year 1960 to secure india's border by developing infrastructures in the remote corners of the country up until 2015 it was functioning under the ministry of road transport and highways while in 2015 bro was made to function under the ministry of defense note that it also carries a mandate of developing and maintaining road networks in india's friendly neighboring countries this is the basic information about border roads organization now let's get to see about the major roles of bro bro has two different roles During peace time BRO develops and maintains the operational road infrastructure in the border areas which contributes to the socio economic development of the border states while in war times it role changes to develop and maintain the roads in the strategic areas for the faster deployment of the indian armed forces it is also executed during this time to additionally perform some tasks as directed by the government in contributing to the war effort It is also mandated for BRO to construct bridges, tunnels, helipads and airfields. This is all about the roles of BRO. Now, let's see some of the major projects of BRO. These projects of BRO was recently seen in news, so kindly pay attention. The first project which we are going to see is the Atoll Tunnel project. It was built under the Rotong Pass in the eastern Pirpanjal range of the Himachal Pradesh. This tunnel is providing all weather connectivity to the remote border areas of Ladakh with Himachal Pradesh. Note that earlier this areas were cut off from the rest of the country for about 6 months during the winter seasons. Now let's see about the another major important project of BRO. It has also constructed the world's highest motorable road. It was built at a height of 19300 feet. and this road passes through the umlingla pass present in the eastern ladakh the length of the road is about 52 km which will connect several important towns in the eastern ladakh region this is about the second project now let's see about the third project bro has re- achieved another milestone in the construction of a 440 meter tunnel under the charjam road project this tunnel is going below the densely populated chamba town in uttarakhand these are all some of the major projects of bro through this discussion we learned about the border roads organization its official mandate and some of the successful projects of bro with this let's move on to the next news article discussion have a look at this news article this article speaks about the stealth frigate taragiri of the project 17a this is in news because yesterday the indian navy has launched the stealth frigate taragiri In this context we will learn about the different kinds of warships and also specifically about the project 17A first let's see about the warships 
there are three different kinds of warships used by the Indian Navy. They are destroyers, frigates and corvettes. Destroyers are large warships which can operate in deep waters. They generally weigh about 7500 tons. Some of the examples of the destroyers used in the Indian Navy are INS Kolkata, INS Chennai etc. Next, coming to the warships called frigates. These are relatively smaller warships which operate in shallow waters near the coast. They generally weigh up to 5000 tons. Project 17A is related to their building of frigates. Finally, coming to the term corvette. These are the smallest of the warships. They generally operate in territorial waters. These are relatively faster ships when compared with the other warships. And they generally weigh only up to 2500 tons. Project 28 is related with the building of corvettes warships. This is all regarding the different kind of warships. Now let us move to the other terms discussed in the newspaper. The news article uses a term called stealth. So we will learn about stealth in detail. See. The stealth ships are the ships that use stealth technology. Here, the stealth technology uses acoustic quieting. It's a new term, right? So, let's see what acoustic quieting means. It is the process of making machinery quieter by decreasing the vibrations in the machine to prevent them from making much noise. So, acoustic quieting process helps in decreasing the sound of the ship in motion. Therefore, it helps the ship becoming harder for detection by the radar or sonar. This is all about the term stealth ships. Now, let's see the uses of that frigates. See, frigate is a type of small ship owned by the naval force that can move at faster speeds. Frigates are often used to protect other ships. They act as companion to the other ships. Now, coming to the project 17A. See, the project 17 Alpha Frigate, which is shortly known as Project 17A, is a project of the Indian Navy. Under this project, the Indian Navy is planning to build 7 frigates. Among them, 4 are constructed by Mazagon Dock Shipbuilders Limited MDL, while 3 are constructed by Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers GRSE. Note that both shipyards are public sector undertakings, which means that they are under the control of Government of India. Four frigates were earlier launched, two each by MDL and GRSC. You may know that Nilgiri frigate was the first ship to be launched under the Project 17A in 2019. As we saw in news today about the launch of Taragiri, note that it is the fifth frigate to be launched under the Project 17A. The remaining two ships namely Vindayagiri and Magendragiri are in construction stage at the two shipyards respectively. This is all regarding the term Project 17A. Through this discussion we came to know about the different kinds of warships used in the Indian Navy and also about the term stealth and finally about the Project 17A. With this information now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Let's take up this news article. This article reports about the Oisala temples. This is in news because this week an expert team from UNESCO is going to visit these Oisala temples. After their visit, they will submit a report to UNESCO and subsequently the UNESCO will decide about declaring the Oisala temples as a world heritage site or not. In this context, we will see about the Oisala kingdom, their temple architecture, and also about some of the famous temples of the kingdom. Now, first let's see about the Hoysala kingdom. The Hoysalas ruled a large part of modern day Karnataka, parts of Andhra Pradesh and parts of Tamil Nadu. They ruled this region from 10th to 14th century AD. The capital of the Hoysalas was initially located at Belur, but it was later moved to Halabed. One of the prominent kings of the Hoysala kingdom was Vishnu Vardhana. During his period, the kingdom reached its political zenith. Note that Vishnu Vardhana Raya is best known for winning the Gangavadi area from the mighty Cholas. But unfortunately, the subsequent rulers were found weak. And finally, around 1343 AD, during the reign of King Veera Ballala III, the kingdom disintegrated. Now coming to the most important part related to the Hoysala kingdom. Let's see about their temple architecture. 
Today, the Hoysala Kingdom is remembered mainly for its temple architecture rather than its military conquests. There are over a hundred temples from this era still standing in various parts of Karnataka. See, the Hoysalas combined both Nagara and Dravida styles and they had developed a new form of architecture called Vesara. The important features of this style are star-shaped platform, polished pillar with variety of designs. Note that soap stones are used for constructions here. These soap stones are apt material for carving minute sculptures. Hoysala temples are also famous for expressive carvings made on the soap stones. Now let's see about some of the important temples. First is the Belur Chennakeshwara temple. See, the temple is dedicated to God Vishnu and it was built by Vishnu Vardhana. It was built in the memory of his victory against Cholas in the Battle of Talakadu. This temple is famous for its octagonal shape of design. Now, coming to the Halabed Hoysaleshwara temple, this temple is dedicated to God Shiva and it was built by Ketamalla, who was an officer during the reign of King Vishnu Vardhana. Then, finally coming to the Keshava temple of Somnathpur, this temple was dedicated to Lord Vishnu. It lies in the Mysuru district of Karnataka and it was built in the year 1268 AD by Somanada Dandanayaka, who was an army general of the Hoysala king Narasimhatri. In this context, it is to be noted that these temples located in Belur, Halabed and Somnathpur were nominated for seeking the UNESCO World Heritage Site status. That's why the experts are going to visit these temples. Through this discussion, we have learned about the Hoysala kingdom, their temple architecture, and also about some of their famous temples. This ends our news discussion. Now coming to the prelims practice questions discussion. Look at this question. It deals with border road organization. Statement 1 says that it functions under the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. We know that from our discussion, this statement is wrong because BRO comes under the Ministry of Defense. The second statement says that the Chenab Rail Bridge in Jammu and Kashmir is built by this organization. This statement is also wrong. It is not built by BRO. Chenab Rail Bridge is recently seen in news for being the highest rail bridge. It is being built by a Mumbai based construction company. So coming to the answer of this question, the right answer for this question is option D. Neither 1 nor 2. Coming to the second question. Let me read the question. Consider the following statements with respect to Project 17A of the Indian Navy. Statement 1. It is the project to build 6 Scorpion class attack submarines for the Indian Navy. We know from our discussion that this statement is wrong. Now coming to the second statement. It says that it is an indigenous project totally done in India. This statement is correct. Project 17A is an indigenous project which is totally done in India. Now, coming to the answer of the question, the correct answer is option B, 2 only. We have seen two prelims practice question and I have another quiz question for you. The answer for this question will be displayed in the tomorrow's presentation. With this, we have come to the end of the session. If you have liked the video, do like, comment, share with your friends. For more such videos, subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy.